Hello, hello, hello. This is Teacher Will, and I'm back with another video. And in today's video, I want to share with you a research that was conducted about rats. That's right, rats and rodents. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you heard about this research, but I think it might be applicable, you know, sharing is caring. So anyway, years ago, there was a study conducted by some researchers, scientists, that put a whole bunch of rats in a um, cage. And when the rats wanted to escape from the cage, they shocked them, so the rats went back in. When they tried to run out, they shocked them again. They ran out, they shocked them again. So interestingly enough, after numerous shocks, the rats decided to stay in the cage and not move. They stayed in the cage, so they were shocked numerous times and they stayed in the cage. And what's interesting is, is that when the rats had offspring, or baby rats, those baby rats that were put in the cage, when the cage door was open, those baby rats stayed in the cage. They didn't even try to get out of the cage. They were conditioned, both the rats and the rats' offspring, were conditioned by their particular situation. They were shocked. They were had a particular lived experience, and so they did not change. They adapted to their situation. They stopped. So the rats were shocked. The baby rats were shocked. They were in a cage. They had the opportunity to be free, but they didn't leave. Now you might ask the question, Teacher Will, all right, I like, I like rats. Maybe you have a rat or rodent as a pet at home, but what does this have to do with me learning English? Well, maybe it's a stretch, but here's what I thought about. Imagine, now let me preface by saying you are not a rat. You're not a rat, you're not a rodent, you're not an animal. But imagine if you were studying English for years and years and years, and you're told to sound like a native, have native accent, sound like an American, sound like a Brit, sound like a native English speaker. And if indeed you don't for some reason, let's say that you want to just sound and speak English naturally, but in doing that, you will hear content providers, whether it's on various different social medias or you've had teachers before telling you, no, sound more native, sound more American, sound more British. Well, then maybe what happens is, is that you are conditioned to learn English, to speak English, to possibly even associate English as one particular way, with one particular accent, one particular hue, one particular region, and one particular color. And if indeed you are exposed to the different varieties of English or a different way of thinking, you're not going to move. You're not going to possibly consider the different varieties. Why? Because of external shock stimuli telling you that if you expand what English can be, that there is possibly a negative connotation or fear or judgment that you will receive from other people. And why, is, why am I kind of saying this? Well, I am from the United States of America. English is my mother tongue. But I recognize and realize that if you've been following me for a while now, I will always say to you, speak English naturally. 
Focus on the aspects of fluency, pronunciation, and clarity, and intonation, and enunciation. And the reason why, for years and years and years now, I've stressed to speak English naturally is because of the diversity of English. And I could be wrong. But oftentimes, I think that one of the ways why people are not achieving their English goals is because they're being criticized, they're being judged, they're being ostracized by people that they choose to follow on social media and also choose, if they want, if they're able to afford courses, that they're being thought as shocked that if they don't or if they don't approach English a certain way, they're being ostracized, they're being judged. Or metaphorically, they're being like a rat that is stuck in a cage that is preventing them to learn the English in its, in its full diversity. Why? Because there's a negative damage if you don't sound like people think that you should sound. Or if English is only taught as something that is native and not natural. Those are my thoughts. I could be wrong, but I want to hear what you think. At the end of the day, for me, if you want to speak English naturally, let me give you some suggestions. Suggestion number one, own the language for yourself. Number two, compare yourself to yourself. That does not mean if you think or believe as though there are people that are good at English and pronounce correctly or you admire how they speak or they use grammar in sentences or in conversational English, you can what's called mimic them or shadow them. But you're an individual and your journey in English and I dare say your life is just that. It's yours. No one will learn English like you do. Suggestion number three, practice. You can practice by yourself. You can practice with those that you trust. And if you feel or think as though that you're not getting the help that you want, find a teacher or coach that's going to work with you, to motivate you, to guide you, to inspire you, to be the best person that you can be to speak English naturally. And suggestion number four, it goes into practice. Having the proper mindset where you move from a place of motivating yourself or being motivated to move from a place of motivation to a place of discipline where you make English part of your life. You develop habits and routines. Immerse yourself, connect English to something that you love or a hobby or an interest. So at the end of the day, you're a human being. You're not a rat. Be mindful of who or whom might condition you to not have you be the best version of yourself in your English journey. You can escape the cage of possibly being defined by someone else if you recognize and realize and if you're willing to question and challenge particular narratives out there in the ESL industry that might not be conducive to your English journey. Thank you very much for listening. For those of you, if you like, subscribe to the channel. This is a place where you and I learn together. Our theme for this year in 2024, shift the narrative. And hopefully this video has put you on the journey to do just that.